page 20, O Sole Mio. At the top of the page, they're introducing some new notes for you to learn and memorize forever if you don't know them, and they're on ledger lines above the treble cliff. One ledger line above the treble cliff is an A, way up here. So you got middle C, C, and then A. And then a B is the note right above that line, and a C is two ledger lines above. Okay, just memorize them. You need to just know what they are instantly. They're also explaining an alternate V7 chord. I don't really call it an alternate. It's Remember the 5-7 chord in C major has four notes. Well, a 7 chord has four notes anyway, but here. Uh, C major's here. There's the 1 chord, the 4 chord, and the 5 chord, and then add another one for a 5-7 chord. Remember, because this interval is a 7th. That's why they call it a 7th chord. And you don't have to use all four notes. Well, most of the time we do it, we leave out the D. So it's here. But we don't we can leave out the B and use the D instead. Either one. Actually we could leave out the B and the D both and just use the F and the G. Sometimes we do that. Still a five seven chord in C major. And that's all this is there. You they've got to hear the word here. It's just, it's just a big deal. Let's talk about this Mio thingy. Four four time. Quarter notes and half notes all over the place. There's no sharps or flats in the key signature when the key is C major. Make sure you can do the C major scale. You should already know the scale, so now you should be doing it two octaves up and down. Just like I do, I explained it all in the scale video, so go follow that. Let's take this one hand at a time because we're moving around. I don't know that the rhythm will be too much of a problem. There's some tied notes, but the moving around, get the fingering. So we're starting here. And it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, once. It's tied to the next quarter now, so hold it down, and the B's come on beat two. Two, three. You hold that down for five counts, and go on. And it's a one and then a four. There's a couple of good things about this. One is, I like using different fingers on repeated notes, most of the time. Mm -hmm. And we need to be able to do this. And it should be any, you should be able to go from any finger to any finger. Well, eventually. Right now it's just one and four. And just, just collapse, get the fourth finger over it, and then play it. Don't try and move the hand real quick. Just relax. Relax the thumb so you can move. Put the fourth finger over and get ready. And that's all. And then we're in a new position. Measure nine. During the rest, you move back up here. A flat. And you hold that down for five counts. See that quarter note A in the next measure is tied? And it's still an A flat. This is the time where an accidental can cross a bar line. So just hang on to the A flat, but then on the, the second A in that measure, they have to give a flat sign. If they didn't give a flat sign, it would be an A natural. Because the flat sign from the previous measure was only good for that measure, or that note, I should say, in this case. So they give a flat sign, and during the rest, move down at the, the top of page 21. On measure 17, well I'm 16, you're here, and during the rest, again, you're going to go way up here, two octaves up to the high C, one. You're basically playing the same thing you just played, but you're playing it an octave higher. Left hand, broken chords mostly, here is a whole note, and then you finish the broken chord in the next measure here, and then a half rest, gets two counts, and then we have the 5-7 chord. And measure 5 is another 5-7 chord. We're just using the two notes, that's fine. And then a broken 5-7 chord. And then a 1 chord. And measure 10, it's, it's an F minor chord. Because the 4 chord is here, we just changed it here. And if you have really big hands and this doesn't work for you, although it should because there's no black keys in here, 
you can do here but if you if your fingers will allow you your hands I recommend the fingering in the book and then here and then at the very end the last measure on page 21 that C two ledger lines below remember is C way down here two octaves below metal C put the hands together We're starting here one two three one two three four one see I'm holding this down as I play this and then I'm holding that down as I play that and then I let up because on beat three it comes up so it's one two three one two so again one two three one two three four one two exact when you lift these hands up. You want it exactly up at the right time. Don't get sloppy. It's one of the problems I have with the Faber books. Overall I like the Faber books. They're very nice but they have some problems and that is the pedaling which I'll talk to a bit later. But the pedaling allows you to get sloppy if you want and you won't notice the difference hearing it. So make sure you're doing this without pedal of course. Always learn a piece without pedal first. Make sure you're lifting these hands up at the right time. Go down to measure nine. We're here. Now here, see I'm lifting up on beat three. again so lift up. Once you can get that okay and then we can add in this slurring and stuff because so far you know, I've been trying to play it as legato or connected as I can except for the rest. Now the slurring lift up it's like taking your breath but the beat has to be steady. Now the left hand doesn't really have anything and you can't really play the left hand connected too much because of the repeated chords but play it as connected as you can. So just connect. Just lift up. Two. So forth. Put in the slurring and we add the dynamics. Whatever you think moderately loud is at the beginning and that's the melody. Everything else has to be supporting the melody so it's got to be under and softer. So whatever you think moderately loud is and then make the left hand soft. So forth. Then when you get down the last line on page 20 you get you get a little louder you can that's the note you're after keep the left hand soft so you moderately loud to loud the left hand still soft and then come back down moderately loud and then at the top of page 21 go down to soft and I want to hear that over that And we do it again, but this time it's moderately soft. It's like an echo sort of, but you're up high. It's easier to play soft up higher anyway. So moderately soft is just a little softer than moderately loud. So don't get soft, just moderately. The left hand is soft. You stay there until the third line down, measure 25. You're going to go up to moderately loud. Like we did before, come back down, moderately soft. And at the end, you're going to slow down and get soft. There, the last line. And all the time I'm playing these notes in the left hand at the end, I want to hear that note. I want to hear that note throughout. 
I'm not going to play it louder so I can. I'm going to play it soft. I just got to make all these other notes real soft so they stay under that note. Very soft. It takes time to develop the control to play softly. I encourage you to do it. Don't use the soft pedal to do it. That's cheating. Yeah. But keep working at it. It will come. You will learn to play one hand louder than the other. And it should be either hand. You've got to be able to play either hand louder than the other. You're just putting more weight on one hand than the other is all. It takes time, but it will come if you keep at it. Now at the bottom of the page, on page 20, they give you a, an idea of what Andante means. Kind of a walking speed. To me... See, people don't agree on this either. Mm -hmm. To me, Marato is kind of a walking speed. You're just walking along. It's not a fast walk, but you know where you're going and you're walking. And Andante is more like a, a casual stroll through the park. You're just kind of walking, not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So it's and it's the flow of the piece. It's just a just casual. Always learn to play the piece without pedal first so you can hear everything. Because the pedal changes stuff, so much stuff around, it's easy to get lo lo sloppy. Now, on the pedaling, they're keeping the pedaling simple for you. But we don't want to smear things up. and We want to understand, if we're going to pedal, why are we pedaling? It isn't just a pedal. Well, although for some people it is, I, I prefer not to. I'm going to use overlapping pedal, or legato pedal, or syncopated pedal, whatever you want to call it. The point is, the notes happen first, and then the pedal does its thing. So, at the beginning when I pedal, it's going to be on the second measure right after I play those notes. Here. I'm going to hold it down. I find that a little blurry. If you take a look at the first line and the third measure, they want you to hold the pedal down throughout those quarter notes. I find that blurry. I don't like it. But if you look on the second line, on measure 7, you lift it up. You're not pedaling here. So, in my opinion, we should not be pedaling any of these quarter notes anywhere through here. So the first line would be that. I'm going to lift the pedal with the right hand. So I hear silent. I want to hear the breath. And then I can put it down for the... Uh, and then lift it. See, on the seventh measure, I don't lift the hand up. There's no phrase. But when I play the, right after I play the D, I lift the pedal up. So it's this way. I'm going to lift up the pedal up with the right hand so I hear that sound. And these notes are by themselves and they're clean. No, they're not mushy. Then I push the pedal down after I play the notes in the next measure. And then measure seven, I lift it up right after I play the D. So here. Now 
on me at the bottom of the page 20 the last two measures you hear lift the pedal up with the right hand so we hear the rest and don't pedal the last measure again lift the pedal up with the right hand so we hear the rest and don't pedal that measure come up at the same time after four counts everything together that's my impression of the pedal for this piece as I said Faber makes it easier for you and they just kind of let you pedal everything but in my opinion that's a really bad idea because you get accustomed to hearing all this blurriness you think it's okay You think, oh, that's fine. I... No, believe me, it's not okay. I'd like to play this with you very slowly to double check the notes and the rhythm. I don't know if it's really necessary, but I want to do it anyway. You're getting advanced enough. You probably don't need me to do it through this book, but I'm going to go ahead and do it through this book. So I'll give us four counts, and let's play this together. I'm not going to do the dynamics, but I'll try and do the slurring and the pedaling like I discussed it. One, two, Ready, go, rest. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Four.